Yeah, we up in here. I'm actually coming on here very late. So those who are watching on the playback, this is not going to be a long show today, but welcome to Chinatown. We might change that, but for right now, this is welcome to Chinatown. I am your host, CB, man. So I wanted to come talk to y'all about this Hernandez, uh, Aaron Hernandez documentary. Um, I want to know y'all thoughts on it. Let me know if the mic sound real good. Um, setting up the studio. So I'm trying to make sure this mic is good. I'm not too loud. I'm not too low. Nutta bitch, no. So um, if you have not seen the documentary, hopefully this doesn't spoil it for you, but it is what it is. So um, a lot of people, um, well, women might not know if you are into football and things like that, um, but it's on Netflix, so it's being promoted. So a lot of people who don't even know much about football will check it out just because it's popular right now, right? So first off, um, my man put me on, my man E put me on, so he like, bam, did you see B? Did you hear about this new movie? You know, this um, this documentary about Aaron Hernandez. I'm like, who the fuck is Aaron Hernandez, right? So long story short, me and my man start watching it or whatever the case may be. And they begin talking about, you know, his lifestyle and and things like that. Now, he is actually deceased. Um, he allegedly committed suicide in jail. And um, they pretty much did a backstory on his life and showed, you know, that he was abused by his father. Um, now, as I was watching, honestly... My gaydar went off, y'all. I'm not going to lie. When they were showing pictures of him and like little clips of him when he was a little bit younger, my gaydar went off. Okay. So his father was also a known football player. So he looked up to his father, wanted to be like his father. So he started playing football very early. Now, one of the reasons why I don't allow my children to play football is because of those concussions and other shit like that. Right. Um. So he started playing football very early, him and his brother and things like that. And his household was pretty hectic. You know, his mom used to get her ass whipped by the dad. And it was a normal thing to see them fighting and everything like that. So he pretty much grew up in like, you know, a traumatizing household. So allegedly he was also uh, sexually abused. I can't remember if it was by the dad, don't quote me, um, or if it was by, uh, you know, somebody in the neighborhood or something like that. So yes, he was molested, okay? So also there were a, a few people on there that confirmed him being gay and said that, you know, one of his friends from school or whatever that he grew up with said that they used to be getting busy, you know? People used to think they was hanging out, but they was actually, you know, getting it in together. And um, like I said, for me, my gaydar pretty much went off, so I wasn't shocked. Um, so moving on, his dad dies at about when he was about 16 years old, and that really tra changed his life. Come to find out, child, the mama, the, first of all, the mama is a piece of shit, okay? Because the mama started messing with, I believe, the aunt's husband or boyfriend at the time, or whatever the case may be, and now they together. So, you know, him going through that, him losing his dad, and then his mom basically basically just left from where he was and um, didn't really help him grieve too much. Like, you got this, these boys and their dad just died, and then you start messing with somebody that they looked up as like an uncle, pretty much, right? So he didn't want to stay there no more, um, and he wound up going to go stay with the aunt, okay? And over the aunt's house... He was smoking weed and all this other stuff. Come to find out, y'all, he was doing all type of stuff. He was smoking wet, y'all. Who those who don't know what wet is, is PCP. The wiggles is what a lot of us call it. And you know, he started dibbling, dabbling, and a lot of stuff. Along with again, him that traumatizing situation. He wound up leaving and going down to Miami. Okay. He started playing for the Gators. And for me, it was like realizing that, you know, like that jock stuff is is real. Like those players, being as though football and just sports in general is a big thing. It's a money maker. Like they sometimes they don't give a damn what these kids are going through. Sometimes they don't care if, you know, they got weed problems or whatever the case may be of their issue. But if they play the game well and the teams are winning, they don't care. OK, so a situation happened where, you know, he was out drinking 
underage and he wound up getting into an altercation with, I believe, the manager at the bar. OK. And they said that he basically just lost his mind. And my thoughts is why? Like, what do y'all be expecting these young guys to do? Like, really, if he's a young guy, he's not supposed to be drinking. He's already probably started smoking weed with the smoking weed early with the eye. And then y'all take them to this bar where he's not supposed to be drinking. And then he lose his mind. He did what a child would do. OK, that's not supposed to be drinking. But they basically swept that under the rug, which, you know, in turn, he, you know, it makes these players feel like they can get away with everything and get away with murder. OK, no point intended. OK, so. You know, again, he keeps on winning. Uh, come to find out he wound up shooting somebody in like Boston. And it just was a whole bunch of stuff going on, y'all. Like before he even got signed with the Patriots, you know, they would go and ask, you know, because these people talk, these college coaches, they talk and stuff. So there was a lot of things that they knew about Aaron. You know, they knew that he was an issue. They knew he would be a problem. They said, you got to watch him and stuff like that, which put him in, even though he would be, it would have been a first round pick. He was in like the fourth round. Okay. And that wasn't just from smoking weed. That was just for like, you know, also his anger issues. So child come to find out he starts uh hanging with this dude um him his girlfriend and the, the the girlfriend's sister the girlfriend's sister's boyfriend pretty much okay and they started hanging out and this dude was also a football player but he wasn't as big as hernandez okay so they started playing you know hanging out or whatever the case may be come to find out he was more of a calm person he ain't really get into the drinking like that but being as though hernandez was getting at a dollar he taking them to the bars and all that stuff buying them stuff buying them drinks spending a whole bunch of cash and stuff like that come to find out child he didn't let this dude hold a truck or something like that okay let him hold the truck. The dude is driving around in this man truck and whatnot. And then once one one night in particular, they he pick him up saying that they're gonna go out, even though he had to go to work and then the next morning he pick him up and the dude didn't come home that next day. Okay, come to find out he didn't text the sister, letting her know that he's with um NFL. That's all he texts or whatever the case may be. It was child, it was just a lot like. I just, I just seen so much like bad things that have led him to this point. I'm not making excuses for him because he did wind up killing that dude. They couldn't really find a motive for it. They charged him as far as, um, I believe they did charge him for the dude's murder. And I, I think they didn't charge him for... Or did they? I can't remember, y'all. I believe they charged him for uh, that the the double homicide, and then they didn't. No, 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 no. They didn't charge him for the double homicide because they felt like it was a weak motive. Okay, and what's crazy to me, y'all, in the documentary, this dude didn't cry when they sentenced him. But when they got the, the second charge came around, and he got the lawyer, the same lawyer that got Casey Anthony's bitch ass off, right? He didn't even cry. I mean, he cried like he cried when he did when he didn't, you know, was when he wasn't found guilty. But he did. He didn't cry when he was found not guilty. I mean, when he was yeah, when he was found not guilty, but he didn't cry when he was found guilty. I hope I said that right. Child is getting late. But I just think that is crazy. Like I said, just, you know, you growing up in those times of or, or just growing up in a traumatized household you know watching your mommy get beat up you going through this phase of being molested and then you being gay and i want people to know and i i think even with the dude that he killed the the girlfriend sister's boyfriend or whatever i think that dude either they was probably getting in together too like you know doing some gay stuff or he the dude found out that he was getting into some gay stuff and that's why he wanted to take him out. That was my opinion. And it's crazy because it is so many situations like that. Like it makes me feel like how many of the dudes that we know is just out there. We think they're going to go play basketball or they're going to go hang out and they actually having sex with each other. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy to me. But like I said, for me, the bomber was a piece of shit. Again, you didn't even make sure that he was okay as far as him losing his dad. And then you move on to 
this dude that's supposed to be his uncle. Now, I also heard that the maybe the, the stepdad, the, the fake ass uncle, whatever, molested him too. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I can't remember if I saw that in the documentary, but let me know if that's true. Y'all could let me know if I'm wrong or not. But I just think that, you know, even after, okay, okay, so he committed suicide, right? Now, this is a few days after finding out or a day or so after finding out that, that you know, it came out that he basically was gay. Okay. And supposedly he killed himself not too long after that. And I just think that it's, yes, it's an unfortunate situation, but he did take those bodies. Okay. And later on, they try to say maybe it was a CTE issue and they compared his brain to another player who had the same uh, situation. And I don't know. Do y'all feel sympathy for him? I know this is an old trial, whatever, but they brought the story back out. Do y'all think this? That, do y'all think that that did affect him? I do believe that. You know, you starting off, starting off playing football at a young age, you've been getting knocked in your head a lot. The fact that he was making those irrational situation, you know, irrational reactions to the situation, you know, just not even thinking, maybe that was something that affected him. You know, it's it's very fucked up because feel sympathy for his family, not him. I could, I could, you know, I agree with that. I, I feel, yeah, I feel sympathy for his daughter and you know things like that. But you kill people, dude. Like you, you went out and killed people, two people, and then he tried to kill the try to kill the fucking weed man. Is weed man and shit that he was buying ratchets off of? I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like this. This dude was doing all types of stuff. But again, we talking about, okay, your brain, you, you getting your head, you know, knocked on or you playing football and you getting hit all these times. And then to add on the fact that this nigga was doing what? So who knows in some of these situations when they was getting drunk and also fucking around with some, some what? Some PCP. So who knows how they were reacting? Who knows what was going on in that situation? You feel me? I just wanted to talk about this situation, you know, um, and again, I'm getting back to where we used to be as far as audio and things like that. So let me know if the audio was pretty good. Let me know which all, you know, reactions are to this situation. I did want to do a long show. I just want to come on and talk about this for a little bit, because again, I felt like it was a whole lot of things that led, that could have led him to doing what he did. And it doesn't help when we have, when, when, when it starts off, with fucked up childhood, you know what I mean? Like traumatizing situations, messed up households, you watching this violence all the time and then you become this, super, you know what I'm saying? And then again, like I said, they uh, they knew it was a lot going on with him as far as when, even when he was with the Gators. So to go through that situation, they sweep a lot of shit under the rug and then you these people think that they can get away with stuff. Like how many movies or how many just random situations do we know of where you have sports players who barely know shit as far as education? They don't know. Uh, they a lot of them aren't doing good in school, but because they play well, they be like, okay, you can at least get a C, and you move like you get what I'm saying. Again, why would y'all y'all got him in this bar drinking at a at, a, at an age he's not supposed to be drinking? Y'all expecting him to act like a grown man? No, man. No. And then his wife finds out about him, <coughs> about him being gay <coughs> during the trial a few years ago. Like, that's crazy to me. Then the wife supposedly, you know, was hugging the sister. The sister came over there for a little bit and she was getting rid of a bag and kept going in the basement, having private conversations. And they both was on the stand. So, so all of these, ten, all of these, um, um, these families were being torn apart from these killings. Like they didn't even find out about the Boston murder, double murder, until after the fact while he was on trial because they found the car at the aunt's house. Now the aunt, the aunt had cancer and everything. Is the only one that got on trial and says that got on trial and says she ain't saying a word. But that was the one that was really his mom. She protected him. She knew how crazy his ass was. That's why she was willing to take that car. She probably didn't even know nothing about the car, where the car came from. He probably didn't even tell her. 
but she would have done anything for him. What, what his mama wouldn't have done. He probably told his mom about him being molested and everything, and she probably ain't do shit. She probably ain't believe him. Like majority of those goddamn moms. CTE happened to a lot of ex-players who didn't go murder people. Exactly. Exactly. I, I completely understand that too. But there's there's so, so many, you know what I'm saying, situations that have happened so much that could have led to that. Again, him coming from that childhood. The people enabling him because he's a, a good player and things like that. Them sweeping shit under the rug. Them still them already knowing he was a little off. He signed a whole letter saying that he would, you know, make sure he passed a certain amount of drug tests and then failed the motherfuckers. So y'all continue this on and allow this because of, again, winning games and stuff like that. But I, I completely agree with, you know, a lot of people having CT, but that's the problem there. Like, why do people got like, it's just that I'm just not allowing my children to do that. I'm not allowing my children to play football because of those reasons. Because of those reasons, you're not going to keep knocking my, that's like a, a whole a boxer and things like that. Like you just constantly keep taking hits over and over, over and over and expecting your brain not to be affected by it. I don't know, man. Like, again, I just wanted to come on here and talk for a few minutes. You know, it is what it is, yo. Again, I don't have no, no, you know, sympathy for him, but like, his daughter is probably, you know, old enough and she might see some of this. And then the, the, like I said, just the, the, the fiance and her sister now aren't probably have a weird relationship because he didn't kill the, the, the sister's boyfriend. It's just, it's so much has been affected by this fucking entire situation. And then the lawyer that, you know, that helped the, the second lawyer that got Casey Anthony, y'all be trying to say that the documentary was untrue and, all of, some of this stuff wasn't true and yada, yada, yada. It's like, bro, they got some of those, those audios, you know what I'm saying? The audio from him being in jail. And I don't understand how people don't understand that, you know, like people, they going to record all the calls. Like, I don't understand, but whatever. Isn't she suing the NFL? She might be. I believe I did see something about that. She might be suing, but, but my thing is, I don't know, Ben. You you just never know who's behind what and all of that. Now, I don't know if they trying to, like, like did they go and talk to the family? Because a lot of that stuff, you can find a lot of those interviews from that time, and they're pretty accurate. Like, I'm not saying they probably didn't exaggerate certain situations and got different people, but even having the bull say that they used to mess with each other. He wasn't in the original, you know, videos and stuff like that, so... Yeah, maybe some things was twist and turned and, you know, wasn't as true. But, hey, man, do do what you need to do. Maybe they don't they don't like him being portrayed like that as far as him being gay. And it's like it is what it is, yo. And that's probably why a lot of people. Mm, 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 mm. Man, I'm getting off of here. It's getting late. It's already late. I just, again, I just wanted to come on here and talk to y'all about this whole documentary because it's just crazy. It's just an unfortunate situation again with him taking his own life and and she still got to raise that daughter. She still, you know what I'm saying? She got on that stand and rolled for her man against her sister and everything, against her own family. So again, she probably have, has had a weird re relationship and everything. I don't know. I keep saying I'm going to get off, but I am going to get off of here. Um, I'm going to try to do another live where y'all can see my face tomorrow. The web camera is back. We back up in here. You know what I'm saying? So, again, let me know your thoughts. Put your comments in on the playback, all that good stuff. Thank y'all for tuning in. This your girl, China Black CB, man. And I'm out. Welcome to Chinatown. We are out of here. Okay? <laughs>